Chapter 6 The Heist They spent the night's end huddled around that small map, formulating a plan to infiltrate the headquarters of Perennial Harvest. It would be no small feat, a modern facility equipped with all manner of technology, not to mention the swarm of clipboards that would most certainly be scattered throughout. By the time the sun began to peek through the car window used as a makeshift balcony door, all were in agreement. This could just work. The final day before the festival would be used to prepare. They'd need to pull every resource at their disposal, pull every favor with a thread. Even enlist some unsavory characters around town with important tasks only they were suited for. Luckily, there was enough ill will and mistrust toward Perennial Harvest that alliances could be found at a bargain. Luca, Beck, and Rollo rubbed their ivory house. They hadn't slept at all that night. There was no time. The festival was to begin in one day, and they each had their assignments. He waved vaguely at Rollo's sizable figure. <laughs> Beck snorted an involuntary giggle. looked at each other with sleepy confidence and nodded. wheezed out a long snicker. <laughs> the 
The joy in Jeff's face drained instantly. <laughs> Looking into the sullen eyes of his would-be accomplice, Luca blurted out the first word that came to mind. to give up so easily, he shouted out again. some traction, carried on. Jeff's scowl faded with a sigh. One good stomp of the foot was all Jeff needed to drive his point home. Offered out his open hand to seal the deal. With a firm and dusty grip, Jeff reciprocated. suspiciously. Luca knew they'd need Iggy and Tish to pull this off. He tried again. Iggy gave a reluctant shrug. Iggy gave a reluctant shrug. Considered the point. wild-eyed grin spread across Iggy's face. Yeah, 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 yeah. over to Tish, who nodded in agreement.
with a quick nod, Luca was off. Iggy gazed up at Tish with a smile. A single tear ran down Tish's cheek. Chapter 7 Into the Hive A good heist requires preparation. And thorough preparation takes time. Something they had precious little of. So far, everything was in order. Jeff, Iggy, and Tish all agreed to do their part. Beck radioed Luca that night with a simple and covert message. We are locked and loaded on my end. And Rolo, after a lengthy confession, managed to persuade Roxy and Fitz to help. He stowed away in mission control for the night to avoid attracting attention. Rolo, being uniquely suited for the role, would be the first to breach perennial harvest. The outfit provided by Jeff wasn't perfect, but a convincing disguise is 10% wardrobe, 90% Confidence. Rollo took a few vigorous breaths and shook out his arms. adjusting his tool belt. With a stroke of his mustache, Rillo proceeded into the perennial harvest headquarters. through the pages of his clipboard. Rollo interrupted with urgency in his voice. enough for Rollo to regain his confidence. The clipboard fumbled around in a frenzy.
Solomon stopped in his tracks. A veneer of confusion flashed across Solomon's face. His words rushed out dramatically. <laughs> Solomon's facade briefly faltered. Luca happened to notice a plaque above the door. Luca tried the handle. Solomon leaned forward to examine the mechanism. Luca smiled and looked at his watch. with a whistle. <laughs> the light on the keypad changed from red to green. <laughs> Luca switched on his walkie-talkie. Cursor blinked in a password field. Luca pecked out his best guess underground secrets. The screen blinked to life. Columns of green numbers glowed on a black background. Solomon's jaw clenched into a half-smile. Luca quickly scanned the columns for number 24601. Once again, Luca scrutinized the numbers on the screen. In that moment of distraction, Solomon reached forward and pressed a large red button. He quickly skimmed the screen with his finger. Thank you. 
approached with a sneer and spoke into his walkie-talkie. With self-satisfaction, he called into the hallway. Nellie leaned over to examine his teeth. Nelly sighed.
Luca held his hand up to the ashtray. <laughs> With a subtle, quivering lip, a smile crawled across Solomon's face. muttered inaudibly. <laughs> Luca tugged on each of the cabinets. again muttered under his breath. They heard the trampling of frantic footsteps from the hallway. Her eyes searched the floor in thought. Solomon watched eagerly, waiting for the flicker of Epiphany. With a sickened look, she peered into his soul. <laughs> Solomon clapped with genuine delight. Solomon glanced down, examining his youthful form. presented it with a theatrical twirl of the hand. Before he could finish, 
Rollo snatched the vial from Kerr's palm. <laughs> Rollo casually tossed the vial to Luca. Luca jiggled the vial mockingly. She held it tightly behind her. Solomon sighed and crisp measured syllables. He pursed his lips with feigned sincerity. A deep uncertainty washed over Beck. She looked to Nelly shakily. With a dispirited nod, Nelly sighed in defeat. Beck slowly approached Solomon. With apprehension, Beck conceded. Solomon pocketed the vial and brushed off his shoulder with a sharp flick. The blood drained from Kerr's face. Solomon shook his head with gratification. A muffled applause resonated faintly through the walls. at the floor, deep in thought. Thank you. 
Colors face. Luca was overwhelmed with emotion. A sudden explosion sounded from the hull. Chapter 8 
comeuppance. Ears still ringing, Gran picked herself up off the ground. Through the dust and smoke, she looked over to see Mrs. Fratelli helping Hiram Tolliver to his feet. She'd had to beg, borrow, and steal to acquire those explosives. How many nights had she spent visualizing how she'd use them to make things right? And now, her one shot at destroying the source, that damned hole that swallowed so much of her life, was gone. Traded for this jagged and a foolhardy shot at rescuing Rollo. With Fratelli and Tolliver at her side, she stepped through. It was a strange feeling. The last time she'd stalked this maze of hallways, it was in a different body. They quickly rounded a corner to find a group of clipboards guarding a door. Something worth guarding is probably something worth seeing. She leapt forward, brandishing her cane. If her last chance at vengeance for things lost was truly gone, she would just have to fight to keep what she still had. They made their way out from deep within perennial harvest, just as Solomon finished up his speech. <laughs> Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. In one smooth motion, he downed its contents. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. With a mischievous look, Beck elbowed Luca. Remember when I had the vial behind my back? Ida tweaked his wonder potion with a little change. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. awkwardly cradled the squirming child. She looked to her brother, her voice shaking with uncertainty. Uh. 
She looked back down at the infant with equal parts kindness and terror in her eyes. With a shake of her head, Eris addressed the crowd with a stern scowl. Epilogue. Beacon Pines' coldest summer on record came and went without much fanfare. Folks shared what they had and none were left wanting. The new school year was ushered in by the falling leaves of autumn. After everything Luca, Rollo, and Beck had been through, middle school was bearable. The chill of winter didn't seem to bother people much. They kindled a hope for a better future in their hearts. When spring arrived, farmers planted their crops with a sense of joy and optimism. And as the dawn of the first day of summer came again, its light slowly spread through the shallow valley. It crept over the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, and came to rest on a young boy sleeping at dawn, his mind at peace, knowing he is here for a reason. Over time, Eleanor began moving Walt's old things out of the closet and into storage. Eleanor had moved back into her bedroom, and now that she wasn't sneaking out late, she even slept there most nights. saw a few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. The road leading to Beacon Pines was long and uninspiring, a sort of natural barrier for the impatient. Service 
collapsed, most of the clipboards skipped town. But some stuck around and dedicated themselves to making things right. her best to ignore the tears welling in her eyes. <laughs> Closing her eyes, Miss Hatch took a deep, relaxing breath.
He playfully waggled an apple. Mrs. Fratelli glowed with a carefree smile. Zen-like calm. Mr. Nuncrate shook his head. harvest gone, the transportation tubes were left unused. Well, maybe not completely unused.
Thank you. 
before. <laughs> Honestly, I began to lose hope of ever finding it. But then you came along. I... I don't know exactly how to thank you. It's hard to explain how much this means to me. It's funny, now that our time together is finally ending, I'm at a loss for words. Let's just watch the end together.
And in the stillness, he began to weep. It was all just falling to his knees. Luca whimpered softly. The tears crystallized as they hit the snow. Gran stared at Luca for a moment with warm sympathy, remembering why this was all necessary. <laughs> She stiffened up and brandished the torch at Mr. Nuncreed. <laughs> Ignoring his final plea, Gran flung the torch into the deep dark. She smiled and exhaled in relief. Mr. Nuncreed moaned in resignation. The torch echoed as it ricocheted down the hole, punctuated with a thunderous thud. Before Gran could finish, the ground shook her to silence. time to spin around and run to Luca, her attempt to shield him, an honorable but trifling act. Unflinching love, pitted against an unthinking horror, there was no contest. Her warm embrace froze in an instant. That is where they remain, fixed in place, forever. And so, our story ends on this melancholy scene, in a town brought low by its secrets statues of a misguided band of meddlers. The end. Well, that was dire. On the bright side, we finally figured out where all the ice is coming from. Now, we just need to find a way to deal with a mystic, unfathomable force of nature. tweaked his wonder potion with a little junk. and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. of what was once sharper Valentine wafted into the air, the crowd began to disperse, still numb from what they had just observed. Sharper Valentine was gone for good. His end would be a new beginning for Beacon Pines, a new chance to let go of the things they had lost and grab hold of a new future. The end. Well, I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a bit gratifying. If that feels to you like a good note to end on, I won't stand in your way. Wonder a little malice.
His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. gazed in stunned silence at the now empty stage. The quiet was broken when William Kerr sprinted off stage and into the distance. He was never seen around Beacon Pines, or anywhere else for that matter, again. Watching the silhouette of Kerr disappear over the horizon, Luca began to laugh. First, a low chuckle that became uncontrolled, heaving laughter. Through his tears, he was vaguely aware that the crowd had begun to laugh with him. The end. That was unexpected. Perhaps a bit of an absurd ending for my taste, but who am I to say? I'm only writing the damn thing. he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. Luca wrapped a twig of thyme around the hook. Some fish have refined taste. Luca tied a bent nail onto the line. If all you have is a hammer...
Luca gently baited F. Good for skimming this. Luca wrapped a twig of thyme, some fish have refined. After Luca's father had passed, Rollo became obsessed with them building their own Hank Atomic Starscrape. It was some time before Luca realized it was Rollo's way of keeping him occupied. Luca's winter coat decommissioned for the summer. With the cold holding out longer than usual, he reconsidered its usefulness. might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little junk. His body and...
face of what was Sharper Valentine was his end would be a new beginning for a new chance to let go of the things they had lost. The end. Well, I'd be lying if that feels to you like a good note to end on. I won't stand in your way. <laughs> a shame lurking behind those eyes. A deep sigh. If Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rollo, maybe he could help. Mr. Nuncreed raised. Creed's shoulders. he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. Luca gently good for skimming this.
Luca knew that if he gave up now, hear the end of it from Rollo. A promise Gran regretted. The path led into a small hollow at the... 